Hello and welcome to the first video in this nine part series designed to create a fully functional blog reader app from scratch. Now before we get started, let's go over some helpful tips. To help you be successful, we suggest using the blog reader tutorial from dev.windows.com to help follow along as you watch the videos. The best way to learn is by doing. Don't just watch the videos, write the code and follow along as we build the app. And this video series covers a lot of content, so feel free to play, pause, and rewind different areas, and of course ask us questions if you get stuck. Before we get started, let's give an overview of all the content that we're going to cover in the Blog Reader series. In this first video, we'll introduce the series and create the Blog Reader project in Visual Studio. In the second video, Get Data Into an App, we'll build a set of classes to represent a collection of blogs known as our feed data source. We'll use the syndication client class to download and read data from each blog's RSS or Atom feeds. In the third video, Asynchronous Programming, we'll review the Asynchronous Programming model for Windows 8 apps and discuss how we can use the Async and Await keywords in the Feed Data Source class to download RSS feeds asynchronously. In the fourth video, Add Pages and Navigation, we'll add all of the pages to the blog reader, including the Items page, which is a list of all the blogs, the Split page, which is a list of all the blog posts for the selected blog, and the Detail page, which loads the selected blog in a web view control. We'll also set up data binding and navigation for the items page. In the fifth video, adding a app bar, animations, and transitions, you'll learn how to build and customize a app bar and how to add animations and transitions to our app. In the sixth video, creating a consistent look with styles, we'll build custom styles for the items page and we'll build a daytime value converter class that we'll use later to format a custom data template for the items page. In the seventh video, adding a control template, we'll build a XAML control template to format how we show the month, day, and year for a blog post. We'll also build a set of styles to customize the appearance of our app and the items page grid. In the eighth video, adapting to different layouts, we'll adapt all of the pages in our app to work in full screen, filled, portrait, and snapped layouts. In the ninth video, managing app lifecycle and state, we'll use the suspension manager class to save and restore the navigation state and session data like the selected blog post in the split page file. We'll also replace the default splash screen and background color. The first thing we're going to do is launch Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows 8. To do that, just hit the letters VS and click VS Express for Windows 8. From here, click File, New Project to build a new project. The New Project dialog opens up and make sure you're selecting C Sharp, Windows Store, and we're going to select the blank app template. Next, go down to name and we're going to name this Windows Blog Reader. Windows Blog Reader. Select where you want to save the file in the location and go ahead and click OK to build your project. When you create your project, Visual Studio creates the project files and displays them in Solution Explorer on the right hand side. Let's take a look at the files and folders that the blank app XAML template creates. Underneath Properties, you'll notice that we have assemblyinfo.cs. This contains the name and version metadata that is embedded into the generated assembly for your app. At the bottom here, we see package.appxmanifest. This contains metadata that describes your app, including display name, description, logos, and capabilities. We also have an assets folder that contains a logo, a small logo, a splash screen that's used when your app first starts, and the store logo that's used to represent your app in the Windows Store. We also have the common folder, and that has our standard styles.xaml. This contains a set of default styles and templates to give your apps a Windows 8 look and feel. We also have the app.xaml file and the app.xaml.cs code behind. These files specify app level logic, and the app class is required to display the user interface. And finally, we also have main page XAML and main page.xaml.cs. This is the default start page in the corresponding code behind file for the blank app project template. Now that we've built our basic project structure, let's go ahead and get data into our app. Mm -hmm. 